right. So we're going old school here. We got the man, the myth, the legend, Joe <laughs> Grow Williamson. Oh, I so, appreciate it, Zeb. It's good to see you, man. Yeah. Uh, you like you like uh, somebody said uh the other day I was uh Ferd and I were on the river. Ferd, Tom, and I, and Ferd used the tree roots to like uh get over the six inches of water and like hug the bank of the uh of the uh river and then i saw somebody tweet out everybody needs a hype man like zeb right everybody needs someone to pump me up and yeah so you got me pumped up but uh how's everything going man how's everything going in kansas city dude it's good you know uh time it's a little weird right now you know i miss going to the office but you know silver lining i uh i spent a lot of time with my son right now Dude, and, uh, the ultimate silver that. lining of all this, We're right? Concerned. Right? What's that? All, the ultimate silver lining of all this. It really is. I haven't spent this much time with him since he was born. And uh, now, you know, he's going to have a little sister on the way. So uh, we're uh, talking to him about that a whole lot. But, yeah, I miss, uh, I miss Blue Chip. I miss The Office. We... Um, Three events that I had to cancel, which were uh, all really important to me because um, it's more reps for me to get better at running tournaments, and um, I think it's important for Kansas City. But uh, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, we'll be back hopefully for our Super Thirty Two early entry and uh, Fall Brawl and Stampede and all that stuff coming up. And um, we just are putting on the books for next year um, first camps going to do some camps next year in 2021 what camps are you so, going to do uh, where are you going to do those at i um to be determined uh, i think we're going to do one team camp and then one like technique camp but um that's all new stuff for me so uh you know i have i'm gonna have to be talking to the papalizios of the world and uh figuring out you know what's important to to do that stuff but uh anyways yeah, I'm just getting through this time right now, and uh, gosh, I just miss some wrestling. I miss wrestling. Yeah, and it was crazy because you and I were on the – we were going to try and bring you in for Ohio State tournament, and the logistics were just awful to it. As far as flying you either to Cleveland or Columbus, it was just like awful. Zeb, I'm telling you, man, that was such a bum deal for me because – uh, I truly believe you're the the very best at wrestling coverage, and so um, I just was really looking forward to picking your brain. Uh, obviously, seeing some Ohio State tournament, you know, arguably the best in the in the country, but also just getting to spend a weekend with you and learning how to do it right. You know, the crazy thing about it is, um, you were really set up to to do all the heavy lifting because I had a nephew qualify this year. <laughs> you, told, you told me that you're like Joe, I'm gonna be in the stands, like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, my thing is like, I was really like pumped to have you there because, uh, yeah, it would have taken it takes so much pressure off me, man. And we got Mark Neiman see, and Rob Gore and a bunch of other guys, the Atkinson brothers and. Les yeah, but I've been watching you for hey, years help. now. It's like uh, you needed a red shirt. You just. How, how long has it been since you just went to a wrestling tournament and watched? You haven't for years and years. The district tournament, uh, the week before, my nephew won the district, uh, Wyatt, Wyatt Miller, and um, I was really excited for him, man. That was like, that was the saddest thing about like all of it. Like, I love my nephew Wyatt yeah. so much, and, uh, and he had a horrible accident. He, 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 he blew his hand off in an accident. He blew his left hand uh he degloved his hand. He's missing this finger, his pointer finger. Um, they had to oh, reconstruct man. his thumb from his hip bone, and he's had a lot of trauma in his life. And he's just a really great kid. And it's just like you can't be pulling for someone any more than Wyatt Miller. And that was like I was just so excited because I was like, man, this is really going to take the pressure off me because Joe's going to be here. And then uh, I wish I could have helped. Yeah, you, bro. but well, no, that's the crazy thing is it didn't even happen. And then, uh, you know, oh, dude, it would have been horrible. I'd have been out just travel for you. I'd have been out probably fifteen hundred bucks. 
No, thank God we didn't buy that ticket. Uh, and that, oh, because right. remember I was like, ah, and then you were like, uh, and then you found out, you found out about this this little girl on the way. It actually, was what what actually was the catalyst for it not happening. So really, probably like a super duper blessing for you, and a super duper duper blessing for me, and you know, and us not having to put you in such an awful position. And that's literally when all the sketchy travel stuff started to happen. And, but yeah, man, I, I just, I was super pumped. Seth, because- I, I remember calling you. I remember calling you and I was like really stressing about it. I was really worried. It was like, man, I'm letting Zeb down. Um, I, I just don't really think it's the right thing to come. And uh, you made me feel really good about it. So I appreciate that. Dude, but, but you bailed here's what I did do. Here's what I did do yesterday. I watched Nathan Tomasello versus Zeke Moisey at the Ironman with my son just to show him what some true heart is all about. You remember that match? I, th- I think I remember it. Dude, we were calling it together. So it's crazy. It was a semifinal at the Ironman. Yeah, it was one of the best calls of all time by Zeb Miller. Yeah, but you're you're there. You know what's awesome about that? I was watching it. There was a David Taylor interview that, that um, you know, and neither one of us works with Flow Wrestling anymore. and which makes me sad because you and I were such a big part of building it and building a brand. And I mean, it's not even the same thing anymore. It's like a, it's a DoorDash brand now, right? It's not even like literally the brand's not even the same. You know what I mean? Like used to be the old school green wave and now it's like some DoorDash looking thing. Right. Um, (laughs) And that's, what's crazy about it. And you know, Martin's obviously gone and he's got rock fin and you know, you've moved on to grow wrestling and you guys helped me start go high. cast when we did that EWL deal. I don't know if you remember that. I sure do. Yeah, and you know, and it's like looking back on it, I wouldn't change a thing about how I, whatever I did with Flow Wrestling, and the, the biggest thing is like I remember when you came on, and you and Martin were doing those corny videos in that old hippie, the Green Hippie House. Yeah, yeah. And I remember when he brought that. you on. I remember he sent you to Russia with a bag full of shit. <laughs> Hey, Zeb, and you were there with me a year later. Hey, oh, wait, two years later. Come here. Kazan. Yeah, Kazan. We were there the next year together. We'll, we'll get into that. Because, yeah, we'll get into Zeb, that. Zeb, we interviewed uh, Kadukov and Mamiashvili together. Yes. Uh, remember, and that was when that phrase, um, in Russia, there's rules, and there's rules you got to follow. Yes. We were at McDonald's, and that one dude's like, oh. who the heck are you guys? Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm from Minnesota. Paul no, from Minnesota. Paul's from freaking Sylvania, Ohio. No, he's from Minnesota. No, I he went to Sylvania, like Southview, whatever the. No, he went to a school near Oak Harbor. He knew Oak Harbor, where I was from. Yeah, that's Listen, weird. And Zeb, I told you, like two years later, us. I was on. I was on another plane with the same guy. I literally just watched you guys same interview thing. him. I've watched that recently. I love Unbelievable, it. Paul. Paul? Me and you at the end of this trip will be fat alcoholics. Oh my god! That's super inside. Everybody watching, that's super inside. I'll, I'll that's post the video. Uh, that's some Tigran Oganesian, Tigran, dude. That was that trip was wild. Here's the here's the next thing about that. We were in harm's way. I don't know if you know. <laughs> like. They don't love We can have so many bacterial infections based I mean, off we the very beginning. Of the in so many ways, shapes, and form. Um, like if you, if, I want you to think about this, Joe. We didn't have credentials. No, credentials weren't a thing in Russia back <laughs> back then. We rolled up. You and I filmed three hundred and five matches. You did two cameras. Every and, single match. And then I did one. And we, we only called, I think, like the finals. Um, hey, those finals we called, a lot of those guys are huge stars now. Um, I remember this young kid was putting it on uh, Kadukov. Do you remember who the, uh, the the young kid was? You probably don't remember this. Like I was watching, it was an early round match. It was a second round match. And he was like taking him off and staving him down, you know, like t- taking Kudukov down and then staved him off and then Kudukov just like rolled him in the last period and a half. Cause remember it used to be, I think you won a period from Kudakov. Do you know who it was? Oh, uh, and did he was uh, like 16. Said, uh, small. Yeah. Don't worry. You don't know who it is. I, I'm going to tell you it was Ahmed Chikayev. 
Chikayev. Yeah. Chikayev is like a multiple time world medalist for Russia. <laughs> but it was when he was like 16 years old, he pushed. He's like, oh, young, whatever. He said whatever he was, uh, Osatian, I forget what Chekayev was. He told us what he was, and he was like, oh, yeah, he's a young, whatever club he was from. And he was like, he's 16, he's really good. And, yeah, he's really good. <laughs> he's still really good. But um, You know what's really good is those go-karts we rode. Go-karts we rode. Hold on, hold on. A bar connected to a go-kart thing. Seb, I remember, I remember being so scared on that. And the first turn, you were up on two wheels. You were up on two wheels. I'm like, screw this. I'm not going to go for the win. I'm just going to go for not breaking my neck uh, and, and tonight. Twice, I ended up putting you in the Russian gales to shame. <laughs> hey, do you remember we they dropped us off? Remember we did the two finger thing that was hitchhiking. You would stand on the curb. The curbs were huge too. I remember. You do this, and, and they would they, uh, they would come up and uh, Tigran and the was, driver was some stranger. Yeah, yeah. Tigran and the driver would scream at each other and like sound like they were arguing. They were actually just haggling. It was all pleasantries, Zeb. We were like, "What are you trying to fight him?" He's like, "No, he's just asking where we wanted to go." <laughs> like it sounds like you were street fighting. Hey, we we thought you were challenging him to it, like a. Uh, you know, uh, Mad Max Thunderdome match. I mean, uh, yeah. You know what I also remember? I wanted some borscht that whole trip. Never happened. I mean, I, th no, I think it happened right. End. We right got borscht at the end. We got some uh, an old Arbat. An old yes, Arbat. old Arbat. And then but, I remember, remember, we had some borscht. I have a video of you of you eating borscht with smitana. With George and Brett. With, with and George and Brett. smitana, by the way, which is sour cream. Yeah, sour cream, obviously. Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, Shnitana, sorry, I didn't think. And then, um, do you remember the last night we were there? And that was the night I tried to stuff the. Uh, yeah, Zeb, how could I forget? The down how could I forget? down best the best night of my life. Best night of my life. The garbage chute. And then it was, uh, we were hanging out with Jamsul and uh, Maxime Milanov. I think Maxime might be the head women's coach now, right? Or he was, was a women's coach in the United States, but if you remember, his wife, his what? He had a baby he that had his night, fifth and that's baby. why we drank he all had the his, bottles of uh, three bottles of, of Baikal fun. vodka. Baikal, yeah. Oh yeah. Do you remember he was like Eddie Haskell? His like uh, <laughs> sisters were there, and his daughter. His daughter was at school, and what's crazy that was is his sister. it was his sister, but his daughter was there, and his daughter was his oldest child. She was nineteen, and that day he had another son. He's like, I have my best son today. Let's drink all this vodka. And we were like, oh, okay, man. Do you remember? John was so pumped about it. It was so pumped. And they kept, they kept, oh, dude, I, vodka is disgusting. I hate vodka. But we drank three bottles of it. And then they went yeah, back to the. Then we flat. flew across the world the next day and you were an absolute mess. Oh, dude, that was, I was hurting for certain. We flew back with all those Mormons. <laughs> You remember that? We flew back with a bunch of Mormons. Yeah. We did. We crushed it. Though. That was the best That was the best Flow Nationals coverage to date. Uh, it was the first time we ever got every single match. Russian Nationals. Every single I have match. all of them still. Yeah. It's crazy, dude. Good, but clean. It's so crazy. But, like, um, other stuff that was just, like, crazy was, like, when we showed up and how they, like, just like little things, you you know, it's the little things. I just watched the toilet video with my kids. Remember the toilet has like a platform? Yeah, like yeah. It wasn't, uh, what did you say? I said it's oh. the little things, you know, like like Pulp Fiction. I'm like, this isn't a little thing, dude. And then, and then you're like, well, there's a brush. And I'm like, well, what do you do with the brush? And you're like, well, you can kind of help it into that other hole. And then you're like, it's the opposite <laughs> of ergonomic. That's it. That's it. The ergonomic was the word I was looking yeah, for. Yeah, said it's the, Let's just say this is the opposite of ergonomic, dude. Oh my god! Such a crazy so, trip, and so it was like I, that. So I, I learned more. I learned more on those trips than I did in college. It's so you know, sick just to swim. It's just seeing so the rest of the world and all that. Figure it out. Yeah. So much yeah. figure it out. Wait, we got, 
Yeah, we got to Gazan. We didn't even know where we were staying. No, Tigran and some guy who looked about 75 years old argued, had an argument. And the guy was like smoking cigarettes and he took us in his like geo tracker. And then like he went upstairs, oh. he yelled at his mom, and then they handed Tigran those like skeleton keys. Dude, I broke, I broke, I swear I broke my foot in that bus. The bus you door, the yeah, because we had to take the bus to the. Foot. And then, and then, okay, so then, then, do you remember Tigran and the guy arguing? He went upstairs. The lady was chopping carrots. He screamed at her. She grabbed a bag. Like, literally, the bag was, like, open. She, like, grabbed the two handles of it like this, and they walked out and drove away. You remember how on edge we were for about two or three hours? Like, they're going to come back and steal our stuff. We were like, dude, we got all these cameras. We got all these uh, computers. We were certain we are just going to get robbed. We are certain we get robbed. And Tigran had no – he wasn't worried about – Jack! Jack's running around by himself outside. What's yeah, we were just certain we were gonna get robbed. Jack! Well yeah, that was like totally the thought. We're like, dude, they're gonna totally rob us. They're gonna come back. We're gonna leave. They're gonna come back. We're gonna come back and our stuff's gonna be gone. And the cops are gonna be like, hey, what are you doing breaking into these these good uh yeah. Kazanians, these these good Tartars, these people from Tartar stands okay. home. Yeah. Oh my gosh. One of the best experiences of my life. Even though we were I was on edge the whole time. Unbelievable. How about I would get like completely and utterly ripped up and then sleep it off and you'd be like up grinding and No, I like, just have never you're like, dude. It, it was when we were there. Um we had got back to Moscow. You know, like a 24-hour train ride, and time to start translating the uh, what do you call it? Matches. The matches. You had to write the matches. Yeah, they were yeah. in Cyrillic uh, on the board. You Cyrillic. would point up yeah, at the yeah. board, and then and, we would yeah, point yeah, down. I remember the... you came out. You go. You go, Joe. I hope you got this. I'm just gonna go in here and lick my wounds. I was like, Zab, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> But you know you didn't have to do any like uh, uh it was awesome. Um so the other one, the other thing is um with that whole thing was uh Tigran. Organisian, right? Wasn't that it? Yep, yep, yep. Tigran, he was Armenian, Wait, the super fan that from next year. You know the next year the world championships were in um in Moscow. And I remember my favorite wrestling shirt was this 1989 Plattsburgh Invitational. It's a small town here in Missouri, and I left a shirt there. I'm sitting there in press row, and I just hear somebody yelling my name, Joe, Joe, Joe. Like, what? I look up there, and he's holding my shirt up. Stop it. I think I hung it outside the window because it was disgusting, Um, and I left it there. He brought me that that shirt back a, a year later. At the World Championships, got my shirt back. That was the year of the Kudakov leg grab, the ball grab. Versus Federation. Yeah. Federation? That was, yeah. And you made the call. One of the best calls ever. Yeah, probably probably the best call ever. Yeah, I would say, say that. I was my, it was my favorite call ever. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I'm not yeah, going to yeah, lie. Yeah. Second, second best to the match we brought up earlier, the Tomasello versus Moisey. Granted, that was just an Ironman on, semifinal. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Probably a better call than uh, I, than the Kaduka Federation World Final in the clinch. Yeah, I'll go. Sorry, dude. I'll go Kudakov all day. I mean, I can't take an Ironman of match course, over a world title. Of course Come on. you will. Of course you will, Sam. I appreciate that. Okay. So, um, dude, Russia, though, is just so much learning. But, like, it turns my stomach to look back on it and – and not just like diseases we could have gotten. I remember I scraped my arm on a on a, a bathroom stall door. It was like a I was like, dude, what did I just get? What disease? How many diseases did I just get? And and it was just like nothing. And you know, I mean, we we're I was it was eleven years ago, and I just thought nothing of it. I remember putting band aids on it and just rolling. But man, it was it was. Uh, it was a Zep, that's a weird place. Let me tell you this. 2008, the first time I went there, I didn't even know what I was doing. 
I was like so scared because I didn't even know how to do flow yet. Um, but I got on this train. I got on this train to go to St. Petersburg with Maxime. I'm like, Maxime, I got to go pee, man. And he's like, you can't go pee right now. Like, what are you talking about? He's like, you just got to wait. You know, 20 minutes later, he's like, all right, you can go pee now. I go into the bathroom and uh, I go pee and I flush the toilet. Zeb, I saw the bottom of the train tracks the tracks when I flushed the toilet. Through. And then all of a sudden I got it. It's like I couldn't pee at the train station because it would be right there. Yeah, you got to wait. The train. So the train's you moving. Have, that was 2008, Zeb. That's a, a similar reason I couldn't ah! upload videos. I couldn't upload videos there because uh, there was no internet. There was no internet. Just that it was just that country was a little bit behind us at the time. Understatement. Did you and Bader get the the you and Bader got the computer stolen, didn't you? Oh, that's kind of a secret story, but yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, that really? Was, that Does it was, matter now? That was twenty twelve, Zeb. If you that was that, when uh, the, hey, maybe I'll, I'll send it to you. There's that, this footage called. Um, secret Russian footage. Zeb, we didn't even are... know we record. We didn't even know we recorded it till we got back. That they put that out uh, there, by the way. Zeb, That's Zeb, like you guys wrestling Zeb, the drunk Zeb, Russians, Zeb, right? Zeb. A couple weeks after we got from, back from Russia, uh, I remember the minute uh, Mark comes up to me. He's like, "Joe, you're not gonna believe what's on my camera." I'm like, "What are you talking about? All this footage from the hour before we." Forgot everything. You had no that, shirts uh, on wrestling the drunk wrestling guys, Russian guys, right? Yeah, we didn't. We didn't remember recording any of that. <laughs> and it was just after that that they stole Mark. That they stole Mark's uh, um, computer, and not only that, um, he had copied over all the heavyweight matches onto the computer, and they stole it. So he had to like work really hard to recover. Didn't you guys find stuff it? From... Didn't you have a recovery mode of getting it back off the cameras or something? Yeah. He ended up getting all the semifinals, third and fifth place, and championship matches. But basically, the it, it gave it to Mark in like thirty different files, so he had, had to patch them all up and get it. But I remember um, when that happened. The next day, Mark just being miserable, and he actually went off on like he just started sprinting down St. Petersburg, Russia, because he didn't know what he was going to do, and. Uh, he didn't tell Flo for years. Uh, oh, that's, he they didn't a, know that. So, so this computer. is new. This is new. We're yeah. putting it out. We're this putting it out there. New, this is G14 classified. I love then. it. I love um, it. The people are getting this for free right now. He bought a new computer on his own dime because basically it was his fault. You but, guys um, left the yeah, stuff uploading. The, you left it uploading in a lobby. You went up, got drunk with the Russian Martin. guys. You came back. The computer no, 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 was no. gone. Mark, we we started drinking vodka and eating raw salmon with these guys in arm wrestling, and no then, uh, we all no went shirts. to bed. Right, and and I don't remember this. We went to bed. Mark, man, because he is such a team player, he went out to the lobby and started uploading videos. Um, but he passed out, and <laughs> that's when they stole his computer. And the next day, I mean, we didn't even know what happened. We looked for the computer all over the whole room. Um, and, and then we put a sign up on our door, missing computer. If if you know where it is, we'll give you like a thousand bucks. Well, the manager of the hotel comes up and is like, listen, you guys are idiots. They're going to shake you down you and steal your money. You, have a, you want somebody to know you have a thousand bucks up here? They're going to steal it from you. Right? Like, take the sign off your door, you bunch of jerks. And, uh, yeah, that's that. Oh, my God. Do they – let's just – okay. So we'll get back to 2012. We're just naive, we're just naive Americans, right? Oh, yeah. We didn't, you know. Come on. Come on. Let's say hi. You can say hi real quick. What do we got? Thomas. Tommy boy. Tommy boy. They wrestled with you. Hold on. Hold on. Don't spill the edge drink. Hey, Ferd. Oh, I see Ferd. There it is. God. Zeb, your boys are some handsome dudes. I know. What happened? <laughs> yeah, they got their moms. Yeah, it's all your your amazing wife, Zeb. That's what I it don't, is. They got, they got their that's moms. what happened. She can that's say hi. Happened. Come on in. Say hi, Mom. Yeah. Sarah, what's up? Hey, how are you? He wants to see Jackie. How are you doing? 
I want to see Jackie. I don't know where Jackie Boy is. I'll try to get him. Jackie Boy! I hear mom. I hear the mom. Okay. Hey, Jackie congratulations Boy! on number two coming. What? Yeah, number two is coming. Pretty Ryan Willman had another one. There you go, buddy. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. We're building them. We're building them. 3.9 pounds. 3 pounds, 9 ounces. That's what I meant to say. His was? I think it was 6 to 9 months early. 6 to 9 weeks early. Oh, 9 wow. months early. Oh, my God. <laughs> 9 weeks early. Yeah. God. Tommy Boy is growing up. Tommy's a hoss. They grow so fast. You know. You know. You know how it goes. All right. Oh, my. Say good night, Dad. I love, love you. you. Good night, Dad. Good night, Dad. Oh, give me a kiss on the hat. Thanks. Yeah, we've been telling all the secrets. I, I think Mark might be mad at me. No, listen. Let's just go with that. Do they make them better than Mark Bader? Do they make them any better than Mark Bader? They, don't. they do not. They do not. He, I'll tell you what. Even if you look at their company right now, who's really grinding right now if, during this quarantine? Who's really getting the job done? The Bader Mark's show. Mark's man. They don't make them better than Mark Bader. And see you guys. Speaking of which... 2012, back to it. Mark Bader and I grew so close in 2012, in August of 2012, because Joe Williamson went off on some some magical, uh, romantic affair oh, in where London. I met, where I met my wife. Yeah, that <laughs> that when you uh, when you ditched us in London. I'm sorry. I'm sorry don't, it had to don't, happen. Don't apologize. It worked out pretty well. It worked out real yeah. well, didn't it? Isn't that crazy? Zeb, I was just you just sent me a bunch of pictures. You just sent me a bunch of pictures from those like first days hanging out with Laura. And uh Yeah, that was that was wild. Without Mark Bader, I wouldn't be uh married well maybe I would, but to somebody else. But uh without Mark Bader I wouldn't have Laura and Jack here. Isn't that crazy, man? That's so weird. 2012 was just, it was awesome. Where'd you guys meet? I forget. It was right before I got there. It, it was, was like the, the night before the I got first, there. The first night we got there, I mean, we were like all jet lagged and everything, but you know, it's just like, you gotta, you gotta go out and do stuff. Um, the first night we were there, we went to that pub at the park right by our flat. And then uh, some other young dude was there. And he was like, dude, we got to go to this bohemian bar called the Dolphin. And we go there, and this same, this same cat is like hitting on who would be my future wife. But the whole time I was like, I knew I was totally into her. Um, yeah. So did and we. Then, uh, so did we when you ditched us for two weeks. Yeah, I didn't care about you guys one bit. We, hey, I, I think that we figured that out pretty quick. So he called, her Hermione, he called her Hermione the whole time. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did call her Hermione. Hey, <laughs> how about him and I would hang out on that balcony, like right by the train tracks, and um, we would just we hung out. We would cut videos. We all slept in that bed together. You remember us all sleeping in that bed together? What, what before you went and stayed with her all the time? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How could I forget? It was a three to four man bed. Yeah, Fenton until, was in there too. Uh, I did you guys a favor and I stopped coming home. There you go. Was it Fenton? Fenton. Yeah, flow track. Yeah. Is he still there? Yeah, yeah. yeah he's a crazy. absolute killer. Yeah, he, that guy, he's, he's a killer too. We watched Leo Manzano. I don't know if you remember that. Leo how, Manzano. Is that, how could I forget? That was one of the most exciting, except, you know, when he didn't win the gold because that other dude was doping like crazy. Uh, Legat? Was that the other guy's that name? Who it was. Yeah, Legat. Was it Legat? But, Are you uh, sure? But Zeb, Zeb, we watched Jordan Burroughs win an Olympic gold together. That was amazing. And then I got to go to all the sessions and you and Mark split. Yeah, I didn't go to all. I only went to one session, actually. And it was just the, the Bur well, it was the, when it was Burroughs. Well, it was the morning. And Burroughs won. Hey, and Varner, and Varner. Yes. No, Varner was the last day. Varner was with Coleman Scott. Really? Yeah, Varner was the last day with Coleman Scott. Because Scott took the bronze and Varner won. 
Yeah, you might. I remember. Like, you might have gone it to was, Herbert. Zeb, you know how I knew I was in love. We went to the uh, the Olympic the freestyle team party together, and I just wanted to leave the whole time. It was the last night. The last night we were in London, and I was like, "I'm gonna go hang out with this chick." Dude, that was awesome. We they invited us to the party. Jordan Burroughs yeah. kept smashing the top of my beers. I got a picture of. Uh, I should have never done this. I look back, I shouldn't have done it. But uh, biting uh, Coleman Scott's medal. I have one biting and, Varner's medal. No, you got a gold. I I only got a bronze. I think I got to bite both the medals. Whatever, I was happy. Oh uh, yeah, uh, twenty twelve man. Those, that was nobody else was doing this kind of stuff in twenty twelve and before. You know, it's crazy though, and to the, look the, at it. All the NCAA's. Remember, we would just be in the back of the. Uh, we would be, we would be hanging out with all the athletes and coaches. Nobody else is doing interviews or anything like that. It was cool, man. It was a it was a neat uh, ride, man. I just, uh, yeah, I don't I don't regret it. I'm glad that I got the offshoot with GoHioCast and you have Grow Wrestling now, and it's a really cool thing to be able to like continue to grow your brand. But the man, I tell you, the old. 09 through through even just like 2012, 08 through 2012 with Flow Wrestling. And, you know, when Mark, when Martin brought Mark on it with Pure Fight, I did Mark's first coverage with him in Pure Fight. We of had course like you did. Phil Davis, Sean Salmon, uh, Matt Coker fought. We had all these wrestlers that fought, and it was an NAAFS thing, which is what Stipe Mayochik started in. And, uh... We went, did, good. we went and did a thing in Columbus, and then we did some we did some Ohio State stuff. Tom Ryan got his tickets for uh, a uh, Ohio State game, and everybody either had red and scarlet or gray on, and Mark Bader had a Vianney, a gold Vianney shirt. Of course you did. It was awesome. Of course it did. Dude, I'll tell you what. I mean, it was must have been like four or five months ago now. We surprised Mark Bader at his – his mom lives in St. Louis, Missouri – and um, he was in town, and it was a surprise birthday party for his dad. But it was also a surprise birthday party for Mark. So they had just got back from the dinner they went to. It, I wish you could have seen the look on Mark's face. He came into the house, and there's you know 20 of his closest friends there. Oh, wow. And uh, he walks in, and, he, and you could see in his face like, what the heck? What the heck? And... Uh, all of a sudden, you know, this is for me. It was, uh, it was so exciting. Super totally happy. Worth it. Could you ever think a little guy could Mark, think so bad? No. Mark Bader appreciates his friends more than anybody in the entire world. He I, appreciate you, dude. He's got your back. Yeah, he'll do anything for his friends. But you missed what I just said. Did you ever think a little guy could stink so bad? Oh, dude, I would never call him a little guy because he'd beat my ass if I said that. But absolutely, you're right. No little guy could smell that bad. I mean, you would think that guy is a 380-pound weightlifter or like a strongman. The way he smells horrendous. And you know, he's like, he'll get on the road and he's probably just eating whatever he can eat. And he'll be drinking some beers and and he's working real hard. And he'll start sweating. I got a... Oh. Hey, I got this video of him and I in a hotel room in Columbus when he came to cover the state tournament. My nephew Dawson filmed me just like kicking the crap out of him on a GoPro for like 10 minutes. It was probably the best 10 minutes of his life. He, he smells loves so that. bad. He smells so he bad. <laughs> he don't give up though. Yeah, he's the best dude on the planet. He's awesome. I'm pretty sure. Mark Bader is just, he's the glue, man. He's the glue. He just love that guy. The bus, the bus stash. Yeah, I'm telling you, I mean, the 2008 to 2012 or so, you know, when you you were at, it was a really a hard grind at Flow. He accepted every challenge, every single challenge. Yeah, I, that guy is just... Dude, absolute crusher. Yeah, he just, if you want something done, you give it to Mark Bader. You want the job done, Mark Bader gets it. It was just like, you want the job done, get Joe. The you know what, though? There's, Zeb, there's so many, you know, uh, we say that, but, like, dude, you were huge. Ian McCutcheon, huge. Mark Morris, huge. 
Um, Gene Stevens, not a better guy to be on the road with. Like, besides just crushing it the whole time, that guy would, like, have a journal full of ideas to make everything better. Like, it was just a perfect storm of people. It was a perfect storm of people uh, to kind of to kind of grow that flow brand. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, it was a very organic thing. It was a suit like the first when you it was first just started. All people that wanted that wanted it for the right reason, you know. Yeah, and then you know, as as you guys grew, you know, it's like they have expense accounts accounts now. You guys didn't have expense accounts then. It was like I'm sending you here. Figure it out. There was a lot of that. No, dude, all the people I named, Hey, let's, let's add, um, um, Cliff Fretwell and Lee Roper and Maddie B and all these people that would stay up till 4am naming files and uploading videos. And I would, even, I would say, guys, go to bed. No, we're not going to bed until everything's done, you know, and tomorrow we'll all be miserable for it. But uh, that's just that's just what we're gonna do. Drinking steel yeah. reserves. Oh, really? You know, uh, Tough. really good guys. I mean, people guys. are making a lot of money now off of what was started by people that did it for free. Yeah, that did it for nothing. A free cheeseburger. Yep. A free cheeseburger. Yeah, that's what we'll say. You're right, and it was like. Man, that Moscow cheeseburger you brought, you bought me was the, probably the, the biggest lifesaver I've ever had, by the way. You bought me this crappy <laughs> cheeseburger, and I was like, so sick. Dude, that, Jeff, that wasn't beef. Oh, yeah, that was you like, could, that wasn't beef. That was Soylent Green. <laughs> made of people. I don't even know what it was, right? But like, do you remember I gave somebody the, there was the school there, Trinity, Kentucky? I gave the guy the, my. I had a hoodie on. It's a Trinity Wrestling. I gave the guy my hoodie. Do you remember that or not? Uh uh-uh. uh Yeah, I gave away the hoodie that I had. We were in Moscow, and there was a kid. He's like, "That's where I went to high school." I was like, "Here you go." I'm sweating uncontrollably right now. Don't worry, I won't need it. It is a small world. I think you actually mailed me a check. You borrowed money from me and mailed me a check after that. By the way. We ran out of money in Moscow. Do you remember that? But I brought extra. I think I owe Tigran money to this yeah, day. I think we owe Tigran. I owe him a Don Comforter. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Zeb, that ride to the airport that morning was oh, miserable. Dude, how about like he went down, he got us to the cab, he did the two finger thing, him and the guy argued, and they took us to the airport. And he was like, they didn't have any lanes, and he just like merged into this big like horde of traffic. It was so crazy, yeah. and I was like, oh, and I couldn't roll the window it down. Was a fifty percent chance we weren't coming back oh, from that yeah, trip. Was, Everything just worked out perfect. What a hey, mess! You remember Tigran? Tigran bought bacon. We were going to eat raw bacon on the plane. Do you remember when he was? Loading up my plate with all the meat that first day. Eh, 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 eh. Yeah, yeah, I thought we weren't going to talk about that, but it, oh, we're it bringing it yeah. up. We're bringing it up. I don't even care, even a little bit. Okay, first day green. we're there. It was green antibiotic. It was green dog butt cream on his hands, and he was handling all the meat that he was putting on my plate with it. And how about their their sense of refrigeration is very different. Or lack thereof completely with their meats. They must just like salt the meat. I don't know. I don't know. But he just, remember, and he kept just loading. I was like, dude, I'm good. That's it's my brother. Hey, my brother. My, brother. my brother's dog. My brother. He kept his, kept his dog, his brother. Oh, man. And he lived in the Hotel Ukraine. It's the craziest thing, which is one of those seven huge buildings. And he lived right across from the, the presidential palace on the Moscow River. Yeah. Dude, it was oh, we were bad. lucky. We were lucky to be there, but that's there's no middle class there, right? Yeah. And luckily, T. John was up here. What a good it's guy. It's either man. you're uh, rich or you have nothing. Yeah, you're rich or nothing. And, and uh, um, that's why there, there's like a Bentley parallel park next to some car you've never even heard of. 
Volga. One of their car brands is Volga. And remember, we were on did the Volga Ol River. Did you say Olga and Tatiana? All right. You, you don't need to bring that up. Uh, how do you get these girls with no words? <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> no. You don't? He was like, how do you get girls with no of words? Course of, course, of course I do. And then... Um, Joe, the girl you're talking to is very beautiful. Zeb, the one you're talking to is uh, not enough be not enough vodka or something. And then you know how that ended up. Old Tigran no, went back on his word. <laughs> Old Tigran. Yeah, one of the best one of the best trips of my life. So much Absolutely. fun. Um London twenty twelve. You met your wife. You're going on kid number two. Um, if I would have told you that in August of 2012, hey, man, you're really screwing us over. This is supposed to be bro time. And, you know, could you have ever thought in London to 20, London 2012, August, that you would have been like, well, Zab, oh, since you said that, I'll stick around. Would you have ever thought that you'd be where you are with her right now going on kid number two in, in Kansas City? Uh, before or after I saw her for the first time, uh, I'm telling you, Zeb. After I, she she took me out on a date a couple days later from there. You know, uh, I knew it was something good. You knew it was the knew it was something good. You knew it was the good stuff, huh? The real deal. Yeah, I knew that I didn't know what good was before I met her. There you That's go. That's what I. That's that how you said. know, buddy. And if you don't know now, you know, Joe. You know, that's the way you got to look at it. So, but like, did you ever think that, so you had a pretty good idea then. I think you just answered it. Yeah. Like you had a pretty good idea. Yeah. That's what, you know, uh, what I was doing in the past. Uh, I think about it a lot, you know, uh, all my best experiences, you know, all, a lot of my best experiences, I was doing stuff with Flo. I was hanging out with you. I was traveling the world and, uh, I grew a lot and. Um, it was, it has been really amazing. Now I'm glad that I'm back where I am and that, uh, I pulled this international lady into Grain Valley, Missouri. Um, uh, I'm back by my family again, but, uh, I'm a totally different person than when I left Missouri in 2008. So, you know, you look at it, there's been like these sections of your life, right? So it was like 2008. And then 2012, you met her, right? All right. When did your When did uh, your dad pass away? 2013. 2013. Uh, Flown animals. The last, the last thing I remember um, before I got that phone call was um, I was filming Zeke Moisey warming up, and then I got a phone call from my stepsister, and uh, and then. Uh, I text her saying, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit busy. And then she texts me back and she said, um, it's about dad. And I knew something was wrong. Um, yeah. And, you know, you look at that moment and that, that like really changed your life, obviously, because he was such a huge part of your life. Um, you know, I was actually thinking about that earlier today, Zeb, because, uh, you know, we were texting about doing this and, uh, I remember, you know, all the people that uh, my dad appreciated and that we would go to like these big events that were important to him. You were there. My brother was there. Mark Bader, Brooks Zumas. Um, Dr. Brooks Zumas. Old, uh, Dr. Brooks Zumas. Doc, the most amazing person ever. Um, um, you know, those are just like my favorite memories now. Because um, they were ones that I know he really loved. And, like, uh, we just had these great experiences at the NCAAs and the U.S. Open and the World Team Trials. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, Des Moines, Iowa. So the last time, the last time uh, I saw him, you were there. Brooke was there. James was there. Mark was there. 2013, uh, Des Moines? Yep, yeah, NCAAs. And, yeah, and my wife was there too. Um, yeah. You remember, uh, I remember my, my biggest draw to your dad was obviously 
he was uh, he worked for the NEA National Education Association of of Kansas, and mm -hmm. he was obviously an advocate for educators. And I'm an educator. I'm a lifelong educator. You were an educator at one point. Mark Bader was an educator. Uh, James, your brother, educator, right? I mean, you look at it, you know, coach, educator, however you want to look at it. But like, that was like my big draw to him. And he was just like, he was really, he had a ton of like experience when it came to education and teaching kids and then re relating to educators as well, because he later moved on to like a, an administrative role with the NEA in Kansas, right? Yeah. Yeah. You I know was, what with Will Zeb was, um, even before it was all said and done with him, is um, you used to always tell me how much you appreciated him and the things that he said uh, before he was gone, and it was like a big deal to me. And so uh, I just always thought that was really cool. It was like a point of pride um, just that, that you said that stuff, and someone thought that – he was as cool as I thought he was. Oh, for sure. Um, he was like yeah. a hero, dude. It's like, that's what I'd like to do someday. Like help my fellow educators out. I just don't know if I'm like, I don't know if I'm like, I could, I could go in like a hardcore union thing like he did. But I think his thing was like guiding people. And I would love to guide people like he did. That's what I really liked about it. And he just, he understood educators. And I just like, I always got a great vibe from him. And I just love hanging out with him and hearing stories. And I love when he like, Got a tattoo. It's like a fifty-plus-year-old man. I liked all that. Yeah, it was all dorky. That was all dorky, but he loved it, right? I loved he it. He loved that. That's what I liked about your dad, and he just—he was just fun. It was like, it was like hanging out with a guy who was thirty years younger. Would you agree with yeah. that? Yeah. Yep, absolutely. And then meet your uh, aunt. I think he made people feel good. He made anybody feel good that was around him. Because it was about them more than it was about him. Yeah. And then um, meeting your grandma. And he always had something good to say. Yeah. And then when we did the Mark Hall thing, we stayed with your hot aunt. And <laughs> I got to meet your oh, grandma. Oh, my grandma. Yeah. Oh, my poor and she called him the prince. Oh, that was, that was my prince, my Jack. Remember? She was like, he was my prince. Because it was your dad and a bunch yeah. of sisters, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that was my grandma's, my grandma's house, and then my aunt Diane. Uh, I hot think that's Diane. my hot aunt you're talking about. Yeah, hot, hot aunt, aunt Diane. Diane. Well, she she lived in yeah. Colorado. I forget. What's that? Did she live in Colorado? I forget. Was that it? So everybody moved from that was Or Lake, Michigan. Grandma moved to Colorado. We since lost her, and then Aunt Linda. Um, that lived in Whitfield, Michigan, moved out there as well. And then I, Aunt Diane, that was the neighbor to Grandma, also she she's got a house in uh, Golden was it Golden Mountain, and then in Florida. Okay. So nobody lives on that lake anymore. Um, but no, you you went through the Williamsons for sure. Yeah, and then um, 2015, I remember I woke up. It was just James and I in the hotel room. And I remember he couldn't find anything to drink out of. So there was an empty bottle of like Jim Beam and he took it and he filled it up with water from the tap and he was chugging it. I was like, <laughs> in the hotel. James is a whole different cat now. James uh, is a whole different cat. He would never do that anymore. Well, it was, but it was, he was drinking water, but he was drinking it out of like a liquor bottle. It was like, we, I, th I don't even think he like dumped it all out. He was oh, I'm so thirsty. It was the most ridiculous thing ever. Yeah, and I think we shared yeah, a cab. We did to the a lot of weird. Stuff. We did a lot of weird stuff, didn't we? Yeah, and then him and I shared a cab to uh, to the airport. Vegas Worlds. Good. You worked for UWW during Vegas Worlds. Oh yeah, they give me Vaughn. Yeah, give me Vaughn. Give me Rick Vaughn. Hey. Get yeah, on. that's what I'm talking. Hey, who did the uh, Godoya versus Burroughs match? Give me, give Crushed me Vaughn. It. Give me Rick Vaughn. It's the try. Zeb, I remember when they called me out of the when they called me out of the stands. I was cross-eyed. They said, "Go put some jeans on." They gave you put that. This you shirt gave me on. the polo. I have the polo. Yeah, the polo. And I dominated for him. 
He did. They they never they never felt that energy before. They didn't know what hit them. It was like a tsunami of energy. They never felt that energy. No. Um, Joe, when did you leave? Uh, when did you leave Flow Wrestling for the first time and move to California? Um, 2013. You know, it was right after uh, we lost my dad. And you were you like know, this stuff huge cross weird, and I just needed a change of pace. And uh, I left the second half of that year, and then I came back the beginning of 2014. But you you learned like kind of a big lesson with that, and you know it's not always what people say. You know, like you make a deal with someone, and then I think you learned a lot about trust. Um, then I think with this group yeah. you're with now, I think you had to make that leap of faith when you had when when they let you go because um, you left on your own terms in 2013. And they let you go in 2017, would you say? Is that right? Or yeah. 18? It's interesting. Uh, you know, I left Flow. I was just a kid still. Um, I remember it was only a few months later that I realized I made a mistake. Um, and I remember calling Martin. Like, I just freaked out all of a sudden. I called him and was like, uh, Martin. Um, I messed up. I effed up. I shouldn't have done it. And he said, no, Joe, he said this, he said, no, you took a chance just like you did with a dirty hippie in 2008. But, uh, that time it worked and, um, uh, you know, whatever you need, just let me know. Uh, a couple months later, I gave him a uh, no, another month later, I gave him a call and said, I wanted to come back. And he's like, I'll have an offer for you on Monday. When can you get here? I'm like, Monday. Monday, I'll get back. Um, yeah, that was just a really weird, that was a really weird time. And you were driving um, back, I remember, in your Honda Civic, and you got caught in like some yeah, crazy uh, weather in Colorado, right? Oh my gosh, the scaredest I ever was in my whole life. I was stuck in the top of a mountain, um, and I knew it was going to be trouble. Somehow, somehow I made it back to this hotel. They told me there was no rooms left. Every room was done. I was like, I'm sleeping in the, uh, I said, I'm sleeping in the parking lot then in my car. And the guy's like, okay, no, we have one more room. And then uh, I was like, listen, if somebody else is in the same kind of trouble I am, they can sleep in the extra bed. Uh, super scary. Super did you, scary. Did anybody take the other bed? No. Nope, nobody took the other bed, but I, I didn't care if they would have. You were so scared. How, when did the weather break, like the next day? No, it, yeah, so I I got from – I went from San Francisco area to – I went to Cal Poly. Uh, Buckley was there, and then I went to Bakersfield, and it was uh, – oh, shoot. What was the name that went to um, – Boise State after that. Oh, Mike Mendoza? Mendoza? Yeah. Yeah. And then I drove to Vegas, and uh, my good buddy Ben Askren was there uh, for fight week. And then I was going from there to Colorado Springs because my aunt was there. And uh, I got stuck in, uh, was it Fresno? Uh, no, uh, Frisco. I got stuck in Frisco, and I was trying to go over this pass. And that's where it got really weird and scary. I stayed in a hotel two nights there, and then I got to uh, – it cleared up, and I got to Colorado Springs. Stayed there for a couple of days before I made it back to Missouri. When I got back to Missouri, um, I remember thinking, there's no way I'll get it back to Missouri without not knowing the next step. Like, I'll have a job by then. You know, I felt like I was pretty connected, and I knew a lot of people. Um, and I, then I told myself, if I get back to Columbia, I'll just substitute teach. I'll rent a house and I'll figure out the next step. Well, when I got back to Columbia, I pulled up to my favorite disc golf course and uh, I panicked. Like I got out of my car and I just panicked. And that's when I called Martin. And I'm like, Martin, I want to come back to flow. And that's when he was like, uh, all right, uh, when can you get back here? How about that dude's like an incredible judge of like character? Whether you love or hate Martin Floriani, he doesn't take I'd no street fight him. Uh, yeah. Seb, I'd street, I'd street fight him. 
But then at the same time, uh, I learned more from that guy. Uh, he's a bigger part of my life. You know, there's some things that really would make hurt my feelings. But uh, I learned more from him than anybody but my dad, you know. Like, and so it is what it is. It's all it's all a, a learning process, you know. It's crazy because you know he's he's the president, he's the CEO essentially. He's the number one guy at the company. When they uh, eventually let you go as a rights acquisition person, but for you to still be able to say these things about him, that's amazing to me. So he was in the he was sitting in the room. He watched he watched that happen. It it was a, one of the most painful things ever. Um, but at the same time, you know when. Martin's watching that happen, and I think, man, this is a guy that, like, I can't even believe I'm saying it. This is a guy that I think understands what it takes to get to the next level and be, like, a total boss. Then maybe this isn't the thing for me anymore. Uh, because if it was, he wouldn't let me go. So when you look at it, this has come full circle now. You're back. You You moved – you kind of like hung out in Austin for a little bit. Your wife was still working there. And then you had Jack there, right? You had Jack in Austin, didn't you? Yeah. So you had Jack in Austin. And it was like all this stuff like, dude, you've had like so much stuff like packed into like in a five-year period. Right. Think about it. it was super tough. It was super tough. Um, my wife is from London, England. Grain Valley, Missouri is not – is not what's normal for her. I want to stay involved in wrestling. I miss my family. Uh, I wanted to come back here and uh, I basically had to get the okay from her to do that. Um, this is a totally different world than she's used to and she's supporting this stuff. That's why I got just got to make this work up here, make these events work, make pro wrestling work. Uh, yeah. When you make that move back and you guys, you kind of, you start to work with Gons and Blue Chip, what was that like? And, and yet it's just like another one, one leap of faith right after another for you, Joe, and another big move. What was that like? The guys at Blue Chip are totally awesome. Um, they uh, believe in me, I think, and they care about me. Uh, they care about wrestling. It's more than it's more than. I have to be careful. It's more than just a business. Um, but they're the guys I want to be near. They're the guys I think you know. This is the right the right place for me in this time of my life. Uh, uh, I need guys like that to help me. Uh, I need guys like that to help me succeed right now. Uh, and I need that confidence and I feel like they're like behind me 100%. Um, and I can learn like they're super smart, super savvy. I have a lot to learn from them. They're different than a guy like Martin Floriani. Um, but a, a different kind of smart. I don't know if that makes sense. Well, yeah, I mean, um, Gon Gons is, this is, important. This is the right, this is the right place for me. You've been around them, Zeb. You came up here and, and saw the events. You got, got the, it's just a different kind of business. Um, and it, and it's, uh, I love it. I love it here. Dude, that event, that, uh, fall brawl event, that's a really good event. That venue's sick. I don't even know if you have it there anymore. That venue's sick. It was like. You just moved it to the. What is that venue, by the way? That's Ivy Arena. It used to be called Kemp Arena. That's where the 2003 NCAA tournament was. And they've changed and it completely. They leveled that, it, right? They 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 added a level to yeah. it. There's two floors, and now you know Fall Brawl is not even our best event there. There's this event called the uh, Kansas City Stampede. I believe I that it's going to be. I, I saved the Stampede. Not, I saved it. Not a big deal. Zeb. It's going to be challenge the Iron Man for the best tournament in the country. I like where your head. I like it, your comments. It absolutely will. Um, because you know we can fit twenty mats there. Um, it's it's a whole different event. It's in the very middle of the country. I I believe in the next three four years, it's going to be in the discussion for being the the top tournament in the country. When is it this year? 
December 18th, 19th. So We're going from 48 to 64 team. Can individuals come? Yes, individuals can come. And then the difference is, um, so it's a 64-man double elimination tournament, but if you go 0-2, 1-1, and or 2-2, and 0-2, uh, oh and two, one and one, two and two. Then you get to go into another bracket the next day, so you're not eliminated. If you get eliminated oh, nice. the first day, you get to wrestle other tournaments, uh, another bracket uh, with people with like records, and so it's perfect for everybody. Wow, um, I've never heard of that. That's awesome. Yeah, and we can do that because we have 20 mats. We don't just have 12 mats. Yeah, and it's all in one room. Yeah. That's what I like. Yeah. If we want, if we want, we can add another twelve mats downstairs. So there's two surfaces. I, I, I don't know what to it's going to be the best thing that's happening. I got a friend. I Especially talk. if we get more of their doing content. Well, we'll see about that. We'll see if it if it works out for you guys. If we have the tournament this year, if we have if we have wrestling this year. Yeah, I actually I have a tournament September fourteenth. Is that the date? September 4th, October 3rd, and then December 18th, 19th. I'm actually worried about all all of them. You know, uh, who, who really knows what's going to happen with all this COVID stuff? Nobody. I don't. You don't. None of us know. It's just yeah. how it is. And I'd rather, I'd rather, you know, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Yeah. Right, right down the street, I have uh, my parents that are in their 60s, and my grandma, that's 95. Uh, we haven't seen them for month a month now, you know. That's crazy. I didn't even think about it. I didn't even think about it. Wow. That's wild, Joe. Wow. And they're a huge part of you. why you're even there. Yeah. What's the deal in Ohio? They just moved everything back to May 15th. I saw uh, for uh, phase one's May 1st. So they're going to start opening May gyms. 1st. Yeah, gyms and a bunch of other stuff. School, we don't have school the rest of the year. We yeah. have online distance learning. Oh, yeah, you're doing that at home, huh? My mm -hmm. mom's doing that. She's at, at University of Missouri, Kansas City, music, music theory teacher. She's got a whole studio in her basement now. That's kind of cool. But at the same time, I still miss the – I still miss being in the classroom and kids being able to be present and, like, see how crazy I am rather than see it yeah, over a computer that's screen. Structure. That's structure for a lot of kids that don't have a family like yours at home, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy to think about it, man. I just, yeah, I mean, I reflect on it a lot and I'm just like, I can't believe this is real, but new normal and a lot of things have changed and that's that's the world we live in. Like you said, you want to, you'd rather be safe than sorry, right? And, you know, you Absolutely. Have, I was so terrified about it when it started with young kids and the science and the data I've gotten back that every, all we've all gotten back is kids are more asymptomatic carriers than they are. You know, the real risk is your parents, my parents, right? They're the real risk. And then people with other underlying diabetes, respiratory, uh, you know, uh, heart, whatever, right? Any, any people with, with issues like that, they're even more susceptible to severe infection or death, right? So... Hey, I interviewed T.R. Foley. Um, oh, I saw that. It's Tim, by the way. T.R. is just this pen name. And uh, Tim had it. I don't know if you know. Tim had COVID-19. No way. I didn't know that. I didn't I didn't see and that. And he recovered from it. No way. Of course he did. He's a freaking, uh, yeah. he's a strapping young man. Exactly. So Tim recovered from it. Tim lives in Manhattan, too, with his baby and his wife. And, you know... You would think someone like Tim Foley would recover from it, but I, you know I've seen these these cases where perfectly healthy people like Tim Foley, you know they succumb to it. Now most of it, people do have underlying they have underlying health conditions, right? But you know I think you Tim's have the anomaly. Tim's an American wrestler, baby. Yeah, but I think you have the anomalies where it's like if you have like a Tim Foley, who's a you know a guy in his thirties former D1 All-American athlete, you know, I, I think that there's those rare ones like that too, right? I wouldn't want to take the chance. If I, if I have control over it just to stay home, I'd rather stay yeah. home. But he lived in New York City. He lives in Manhattan. He has real no – he can't really avoid that. You know what I mean? 
That's the scariest place there is yeah, in the United it's States. It's the epicenter in America, right? Um, Joe, you know, like, uh, Dad passed away seven years ago. Um, you know, almost seven years this month, isn't it? Crazy. Right? April uh, 6th. What do you think the, the thing your dad would be most proud of you about? Oh, my son. No doubt about it. That was easy. <laughs> I was yeah. leaving his son. Out of it. Ah, my son. My son who I named after him. Oh, okay, let's move yeah. on. <laughs> Jack Williamson. <laughs> hey, what's up? That was easy. My son. Uh, well, and then, and then, yeah. when's the next one coming, Joe? September 25. Yeah, so September 25 or thereafter. I'm guessing. Zebulina? You know, yeah. Stop it. <laughs> uh, Hermione. 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 You're welcome. No, Boom. I want to call her Laura so bad my wife won't have it. No, she's not into the like Laura. Loretta? Oh, uh, no. Okay. I don't know. What's next, Joe? Yeah. What, what's They cancel your events. What do you do? Hey, man, keep trucking. Uh, there's nothing I can do. Um, it sucks because I'm missing these reps on, you know, I'm still like a, a C minus tournament director. Um, when I look, when I think about what I feel like at my events and I compare it to like Sarah and Dave at Super 32 or Frank Papalizio, I'm just nowhere even near that level. So I miss getting those uh, events. Um, to get better, but, um, yeah, a little adversity never hurt anybody. Luckily I have some good support. Um, I want to make these terms as good as possible. And then, uh, you know, enjoy doing uh, content. Like, you know, that's what I love to do the most. Seb. Um, it's my, the relationships I've got through wrestling that, uh, I want to continue to, to keep that going. Martin brings you back. He puts you in some rights acquisition role. It's not the right role for you. You're a content guy. You're a people person. Um, you know, someone put on Twitter, like, within the last month, they're like, whatever happened to Joe Williamson? Whatever happened to Joe Flo? And I was like, hashtag unpopular question. Unpopular opinion. He, he was the best. And I wrote, hashtag unpopular opinion. Right? Um, but, yeah, like, it's almost like the people don't want to talk about it and give you your credit, your due. You know, you went and you did this other thing and you moved back home. But how bad was that other job? Like, how much did you want to just be back in content? Uh, I would have took, uh, I would have cut my pay in half. Would have cut my pay in half. They could have given you 50% of what you were making just so you could go and travel and, and cover mat, cover, cover tournaments like you were, you're saying. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let's say you made 100 uh, grand. You'd, well, have, you'd have taken a uh, Zeb, it takes weird experiences to make you understand um, what makes you happy and what doesn't, right? It's not a lot of money that makes me happy. It's um, getting to be around people that I love to be around. Um, it loves, I love being around the community, the wrestling community. Um, I want to be on the floor. Um, when I was doing rights acquisition, uh, the people that were in my department, they would get their rocks off getting a contract signed and I just didn't care, you know, uh, I'd rather, I get more excited, um, editing a video that people really loved, um, or being by Terry brands or John Smith or at the Las Vegas invite, um, being like right in the mix of all the stuff that made me excited. Um, it was, you know, it's end of the day it was probably a really good thing that I get to feel what I don't like. Uh, how was your relationship with Martin Floriani? I'd punch him in the nose, but I love I love the guy. After you punch him in the nose, you know you have to fight him. No, yeah, and I'd probably lose because that guy has zero give up in him. He's so crazy. Nah, I love I love I like that guy a lot. But he got you on Rockfin, so he was able to, right? I mean. He got, you, he got you to buy uh, into him again, didn't he? Much, I mean, that's not as much about Martin. It's just like uh, um, right now it's like the most important thing is I get the most eyeballs on what I'm doing. 
Um, if you think about flow wrestling, it's not like flow wrestling didn't make any money before it built a big community around it. Right. Uh, the most important thing is the most people see grow wrestling stuff and then down the road, you know, find a way for it to make more money. But uh, it's just about eyeballs, not about making the fastest profit possible. Joe, how do we grow? You know, like I, I've, you know, that I, I'll do anything to help you grow wrestling with your site, grow wrestling. You know that I give you content, um, whatever it takes, right? I, I do whatever I can to help you. What do you think we can do to help not grow the sport of wrestling, but grow your site and grow your brand of grow wrestling? Hey, I just got to put on dynamite wrestling events. Um, try to do cool wrestling content and put on really good wrestling events that make people happy and enjoy them. I mean, it's on me really. Do you like Luckily, it? Luckily I have really good support. Do you like it when I, when then you can bring someone in like me? Maybe, maybe it's, yeah, maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's Rob you're Moore, the maybe it's Mark Neiman, maybe it's Cliff Fretwell, maybe it's someone who does, who creates content, right? Do you like when, or Mark, let's say Mark Bader comes in, right? That'd be like a dream to you. Mark Bader's probably the best in the business. You know, between you and Mark Bader, you're the best in the business, in my opinion, when it comes to creating content, no, so, interviewing people. So uh, the hard part for me right now is like um, the content part's my favorite part, right? But um, I've learned in the last year that running these tournaments, um, I can't focus on the content part because – there's a thousand things happening and I'm not even really that good at it yet. Um, so the best thing I can do is bring on somebody like you or Mark Neiman. Uh, if I could have a Cliff Fretwell there, you know, that's what's going to be best for my events right now. So yeah, you don't have to worry um, about the content creation. I don't think there's ever a scenario where I'm so organized that I can do Seb, when you came to the to the fall brawl, you did a hundred interviews. I didn't do an interview until the finals happened, uh, just because it's not possible. You're putting out some fires um, and getting people their awards and making sure about she anyway, get turned in. So and I don't think there's ever going to be a time where I'm at my event doing enough content to feel good about it. I'm going to always have to hire somebody to have them do that piece. Okay. Do you want to tell the story real quick about that time I saved the KC Stampede? <laughs> yeah, it's a great story. So, um, Paul DeFossi, he runs what was it? What's his business called? Takedown. It's 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 computer software and score clocks. Yeah. So he's on this a is before Rhode Island. A, he's on a Rhode is, Island. This is, this is before I had anything to do with Stampede, but uh, I mean, I did. Uh, I just organized the uh, the stuff with Flow and the Score Clocks. Um, well, I get a call from the Stampede guys, and um, Paul DeFossi is driving down all the Score Clocks, and he does the meat management. Um, but he rolls his van. He rolls his van with all the equipment in it, and um, in I get a call. What do we do? In Akron. In Akron, yeah. yeah. So I get a call, Joe, what can we do? And I'm like, I know this guy, Zeb Miller. Uh, I'm going to call him. He probably knows a college guy that wants to make some money and drive it down. I call Zeb. Zeb says, dude, I got this. Zeb goes and picks up Paul. He's got broken ribs no, and shit. No, stuff. no, no, I was like, I'll have my dad do it. My dad eventually like is like, Zeb, I just can't do it. I got to work. I got iron work to do tomorrow. Paul drives to my house and picks me up See. in a snowstorm. Go. And then you drove. But you drove from there, right? Because he's all zonked out yep, on 15 hours. medication. 15 hours. You drop off all the equipment. The tournament gets set up just in time. You got to the airport just before your flight back. Yes. Stampede is saved. I, I left here at 5 o'clock that night in a snowstorm. 
we drove into a 50 mile an hour headwind and the the they loaded it into a rider truck they loaded it into a like a u-haul rider whatever like a cross-country moving truck and those don't have cruise control so you just i just straightened my leg and stuck the stuck it all the way to the floor the throttle the gas pedal and it was like a That's like a wind sail Huh? You drove me through a through a blizzard after the Iron Man in like 2009. Yeah, it was crazy too. I remember that. You popped your tire. You popped your yeah, tire. Yeah, my tire. That's right. Tire. We just kept rolling oh, before we drive. Right. But I got to Stampede and was is it Carrie? Yeah, Carrie Rolofson. Carrie picks me up. He drops me off and I walk right onto the plane. And I connected through like Nashville or Memphis. And then I was standing in my driveway here. The Uber driver was from Haiti. He was speaking French the whole time. Drops me off. He wouldn't come out my driveway. And he was like, I just, we got like a foot of snow. And I drove it through there and it made it there. And they just got the clocks and everything set up for the first whistle. And the carry guy saw me at the fall brawl. And he was like, oh my God, it's you. And he was like, like he almost like he was like, oh, give me a hug. It was awesome. I love it. So I think totally, I'm gonna try yeah. and get a really good guy to come to Stampede this year. I have to talk to somebody. December 18th. You should come. Uh, Gene Stevens is coming this year. Why? Well, you got I've already, He's on the team. He's on the team. Um, That's the guy you want around. Gene's with the tug boats, right? Tug life. He was. I don't think he's tug life anymore. He's not tug life anymore. But, like uh, Gene's a good guy. He's the kind of guy that makes anything better that he touches. So Absolutely. He's gonna Great be guy. Joe, we've been on here for an hour and almost 20 minutes. Is there any I could keep doing it, but uh, Is there I should probably put Jack to bed. Do you have any stories for me? Anything else that you want? Anything. Anything you want to talk about? Anything that I missed? Anything? Any hot No, singing? man. I love you like crazy. Uh, like I said, uh, the things I appreciate about my last 15 years are the, the friends that I made along the way. And, uh, and, uh, you're a big piece of that. I appreciate you like crazy. And, uh, I look forward to next time our paths cross. Absolutely, dude. Yeah, man. You're just, you're, you're good stuff. I just trust you with my life. I'm, uh, super glad that you, uh, let me lick my wounds in Moscow. Oh, hey, do you remember that uh, Godsalov was on our train from Moscow to Kazan? Do I remember that all the Russians came to watch their wrestling matches? Do you remember? And how about that? How about that? That uh, Kent State duel? Dustin Kilgore! He's got his headgear on. Yeah, and that was the junior high move, too. Oh yeah, Matt Cathell. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, Junior High room. and um, was that also the the slam on um, oh, the net? To sorry, Ohio. was that Ohio? No, that was Central Michigan. No. I was thinking to sorry when he got smashed by your nephew. Yeah, how about that? Isn't that wild, dude? Isn't it? It's crazy. That was 2011, man. That was December of 2011. Nearly 10 years ago. That's so wild. Time just, and it really flies when you start having kids, doesn't it? Yeah. Wild stuff. Well, hey. All right, Jeff. If you don't have anything else I'm gonna to go do, listen, I love you like a fat kid loves cake. Thank you for everything. <laughs> Thank you for the time. Um, you can let, go watch this live one right now, the one that I'm filming with the phone that I'm pointing at. And then send it to me. I want to put it on my uh, my channels. And then this edited one that's being filmed on the camera or on the phone, or, I'm sorry, the computer, um, that will be up tomorrow morning or late early afternoon. Okay. All right. Sounds good, Zab. I love you, buddy. All right. Stick around a little bit. Let me cut this live feed and cut the uh, video here. So hold on. All right. Let me do that. And then. Uh,